Hey friends, welcome back to the channel with another movie reaction. We are watching The Farewell, starring Aquafina, and I know she's from Forest Hills, um, my neck of the woods, exactly where I live, um, Queens, New York City, and um, I've seen her in Crazy Rich Asians, which I enjoyed. Um, and I also know the general premise of this film, it's that her character's grandmother is dying, but because of Chinese sensibilities or tradition or culture, uh, the family, who are all immigrants, uh, decide not to tell her so that she can live out the rest of her days without worrying, um, li living peacefully. Um, but being born in the United States, uh, Aquafina's character doesn't feel right about this. Um, she feels conflicted about it. And so this is probably a movie that focuses a lot about her identity as both Chinese and both and American. Um, and I can relate to that really, really strongly. So I'm very curious to see uh, how it all plays out on screen because yeah, I'm, I was born in the United States, but my parents are from my mom's from Taiwan, my dad's from Hong Kong, but they're both uh, from the province. They're, they their ancestry goes back to Fujian, um, so I'm hundred percent Fujianese, whatever that means. Um, but yeah, uh, I have my own struggles with Asian cultures as well, so um, I'm not sure I've seen it depicted as well as it could be on the big screen um crazy rich asians was about a, an experience that i th some of some bits were familiar but because it focused on super rich people uh it didn't completely ring true with me not ring true it it didn't connect with me as much as uh something like this probably will so i'm very much looking forward to this uh if you guys want to watch the full reaction uh, you can check out patreon in the link in the description below otherwise i'm excited to check this out let's go based on an actual lie. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Her Mandarin is so weird. Oh my god. Her Mandarin is so I don't I don't know how to describe it. It's so it feels rigid. That's the word I'm looking for. Rigid. <laughs> Does she smell the bullshit? One day the wife goes, honey, your mom. She got oh my god. Okay, unrealistic. I've never heard the word I love you from anyone in my family. How many wontons you want? Five. Five? That's not enough. Make a dozen then. Ten's good. Okay. It's just never... Never what you want. That feels so real. Five? Twelve? No. Ten. Ten is good. The doctor says she has a three months. Could be faster. You never know. I need to call her. You can't do that. I need to go see her. You can't do that. She doesn't know. <laughs> this bullshit. It's better not to tell her. How could you let me find out like this? Oh, should I have told you? Oh, you grandma's on the roof? <laughs> you can't hide your emotions. If you go, then we'll find out right away. So you're telling her never to see her grandmother again, you fucking monsters? <laughs> Sorry, they're not fucking monsters. I'm just... I have my own shit with this kind of thing. How else? Stop fooling around. Oh, it's hot. Don't be mad, mom. Look at my face. Look at my face. Look. <laughs> Kick the table. Uh. 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 She just rolled her eyes. Nanetha 
，也、yeah. ，我知道，我们也不想告诉他，我知道。Oh my fucking god！ 告诉他。哦 ，I used to have those. I don't know where they went. They're still at home somewhere. Ha! <laughs> 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 Oh my God! So what's going on with the fellowship? Nothing. You still haven't heard anything? No. Well, what are they gonna let you know? I don't know, Dad. How are you doing with money? I'm fine. Can you afford this trip? Yes, I'm fine. You need help? No, I'm fine. <laughs> She's so fed up. Tom, go go. Not a man. Watch out. I'm mad. If he says to say goodbye, it's too hard. Why do you have to go through this? Come, come, come. My head is on his shoulder. Come. 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 奶奶给你操办一个更大的婚礼。That's depressing. The poor fiance looks like a deer in headlights. You said you're a stock investment and you're gonna make us a lot of money. But I can't expect that from you, right? You are the losing stock. 你们知道吗？我不刚去美国的。他们真把钥匙给你了？这就是美国。That church is not representative of all America. We have a lot of problems, guns, healthcare. If you think China is that good, why don't you move here? 中国人有中国人的好处。再说了，咱也不是一无是处，是吧？那当然了。Yeah, that. Yeah. She, she's never done it before, so this is. They, did, they didn't even worry, wonder about it, did they? Uh. <laughs> Do you know about my grandma's condition? You must show this shy. Oh, oh, 奶奶，她在英国学习，所以她会说英文，是吗 ？Oh, oh my, oh my God. 我想问你，结婚了吗 ？Oh, 我还没有。哈哈。Uh. When my grandmother had cancer, my family didn't tell her. Isn't it wrong to lie? It's a good lie. 奶奶知道我们在骗她，她会生气吗？她气什么气呀、啊？她也做了同样的事情。爷爷得癌症的时候，奶奶也是这么瞒着。知道。It's in the stress of knowing something's wrong but not knowing what it is. Doesn't that freak you out too? There's just a sad shadow over the whole entire film. <laughs> Seems about right. <sighs> wow. You have always had issues with her, but right now. I don't now, have problem with her. She's the one had problem with me. She's dying. Can you be a little more sensitive? What do you want from me? To scream and cry like you? No one's asking you to cry. Oh, <laughs> They even hire some professional criers just to show how sad they are. Ah! 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 Ah!
at the same time, but it was still a little too recent. I want to stay in China, and I'll take care of Nai Nai. So you just stay here, and what? Wait for her to die? And we just moved to the States. Everything was different. Everyone was gone. I wanted to believe that it was a good thing. But all I saw was fear in your eyes. And I was confused and scared constantly because you never told me what was going on. And then Yeah Yeah died. You didn't even tell me he was sick. And you wouldn't even let me go to his funeral. We didn't want you to miss the school. We did what we thought was best for you. But I never saw him again. And I come back, and he's just gone. The house is gone. Adia is gone. Our Beijing home is gone. And soon she'll be gone, too. <laughs> He's oblivious. What? You gotta drink again. <laughs> he just gave up and drank. <笑>你看我说我没事吗拿着拿着啊我没结婚那更得拿着了你全靠你自己可不能花在交房租上 <笑> Hmm. <laughs> 
What? Six years. I think I went silent for like the last big chunk of the movie. I don't know. I was kind of like transfixed and. Uh. So it was actually really, really interesting watching this film. And what I forgot to mention in my intro, uh, but I did mention in my reaction, was that I waited to watch this film because my own grandmother died uh, within a few months of the movie coming out, and I didn't feel like watching it just yet. Um, but yeah, I finally got around to it now. And, you know, I was never really that close with either of my grandparents. Um, this is my maternal grandmother and grandfather. Both my paternal grandparents passed before I was born. Um, but I was still very sad and when she passed. Um, I think the worst part was that my grandfather kept waking up in the middle of the night asking where she was because he had Alzheimer's and just kept forgetting. And then asking, like, how come nobody told me she died even though he was there when uh, she was when she died? So that was really rough. And, like, I actually didn't know that this was a thing people do in China where they just don't tell people they're dying. Like... And it seems kind of odd in and of itself that the doctor tells the sister, Nai Nai's sister, first, and not her. Um, but I guess that's part of the culture. I don't... It's all really weird to me. And, um, yeah, I looked up... I looked it up after this film um, because they said it was based on a real lie. And it turns out the director, Lu Lu Wang, based this on her own experience and her own family. And the Nai Nai they show at the end is actually her grandmother, which is just... Wow, like the the story being told so compellingly due to the fact that this came from such a personal space, um, you could really, really feel that. And uh, phew, wow, what what? I have so many thoughts about this film. This commentary might be like thirty minutes long, honestly. Uh, I do find it a little weird that Billy's Mandarin wasn't better. Like, granted, she left China when she was six, but like I was born here in the United States, and my pronunciation is much, much better. It's not annoying or anything that her Mandarin is like that. It's just kind of... It's actually kind of charming. It's just a little weird. Um, I'm thinking part of it can definitely be explained away by the fact that her parents seem to only speak English to her when they're in private, which has never been the case for me. My parents, um, like, actually taught me Mandarin first. Mandarin first. Um, and didn't teach me English. Uh, they figured I'd learn English fine on my own. Um, yeah, they didn't teach me even though... They, their English was, it was okay. My dad's is a lot worse than my mom's, but, um, yeah, English was my second language. Um, started learning it around when I was, like, three-ish, instead of Mandarin when I was just born. Um, but yeah, there's all, there's so many little details that came, that felt so true and so authentic. Um, I'm lucky enough that my parents don't ask me, like, when are you getting a girlfriend, or when are you getting married? Um, at least not too often. It happens once in a while, but it's not, like, constant. Uh, my grandpa does, though, once in a while, but, yeah, still not constant, just, um, once in a while. Um, and I think one of the strongest parts of the film for me is just personally how connected I felt to Billy, just seeing her go through a lot of the same things I go through as an Asian American. Um, like, the, the wontons, oh my god, the, that frustrates me so much. You might some people might th some people might think like, oh, what's the big deal? Like, but like, how many do you want? You want five? She said five. Well, five is too little. Fine, a dozen. No, ten is good. Like, why ask if you're just gonna decide for her? And it's something that seems like pretty small, but it's like every day, nonstop with everything. You can't have any choice of your own unless you seriously advocate for yourself. Um, or just do everything on your own. Because uh, it's, it's a thing where these Chinese parents just do what they think is best for you regardless of what you want for yourself. And and regardless of if it's actually what's best for you. Uh, especially what happened later in the film with um, Billy's mom telling her she kept her from her grandfather's funeral because we thought what was best for you was... For you to stay in school, like not knowing, not realizing, not even thinking for a second that it could cause trauma for her. I mean, that's just I don't I don't understand how they can reach that conclusion that, oh, it's better for you to keep going to school and just miss your grandfather's funeral. Uh, 
and often it almost feels like they want to be in control even though the impetus behind it is that they want what's best for you it's like they don't they often don't understand what is best for you uh and especially for billy who has grown up almost her entire life in the united states uh the culture she's around um her needs are different her wants and needs are different and they can't understand that um and uh <laughs> the mom telling billy that the grandma has three months to live maybe less you never know this is i i've actually never heard any other person say like say say something like like you never know i, I don't know if it's a chinese thing or is anyone chinese watching this because my dad says it all the freaking time and it pisses me off so much like the way the mom uses it in the film is perfectly fine uh, but it's still like really really got to me because my dad says it all the time and it really pisses me off like i'll give you an example um like he and i were talking about how this guy in the news like spit in a cop's eye and the cop, cop just like, reflectively reflexively like punched him out and my dad was like it's self-defense what if the guy had hiv and passes it along by spitting on him and i told him that hiv can't pass through saliva and he says you never know like oh i just told you something i know for a fact and you're treating me like i don't know what the heck i'm talking about and it's all the freaking time it's just so condescending and the fact that he won't believe anything i say definitely f makes me feel like i makes me feel like he thinks i'm stupid even though he himself has said that he's really really dumb didn't pay attention in school and that i should never listen to him at, but at the same time he won't believe anything i say uh, but again like very curious if it's a chinese thing like i don't even know if it translates to a common chinese saying like i don't i don't know um just fyi if there's blood in your saliva then it's possible to pass hiv onto somebody if you spit that blood into like an open wound or something but like the whole point was he was spitting blood into at some guy's face and saliva it doesn't pass through just saliva um yeah i went off on a whole tangent because i don't know if that's something that's innate to chinese culture the saying of you never know um but yeah the mom says that it's not the cancer that kills people it's the fear and knowing what we know at the end of the film that the grandmother is still alive six years later how right is the mom like i mean not knowing means you won't have to deal with the stress which can exacerbate an issue though you're also being super gaslighted like maybe deep down you know something's wrong but the doctor and everyone else keeps telling you you're wrong that you're completely fine doesn't won't that stress you out even more um and if it really actually helped not to know then i i don't it's hard to know I, it's hard to know what i would do um but i i have an idea of what i would do but like at least show me some actual evidence that keeping a secret from someone is actually going to help them. Like, someone do a study of some sort. Uh, I'm actually very curious. And uh, lung cancer. Is it safe to blame it on the husband smoking? Ugh. And uh, the pollution over in China is pretty bad, too, because they have so many people. Um, though it's, it's actually worse over in the United States. It's just that we have less people with less population density. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people in the united states point over china and be like oh they have like so much co2 producing they just produce so much co2 uh when we here like per person create more than twice as much co2 as they do it's just that their person uh population is more than four times uh of ours so uh but yeah again with the uh, feeling connection to this film like i've never had so many things in a film before remind me of things that happened with my own family and evoked like such an emotional response and uh, I was kind of furious with the parents telling Billy to stay in New York and not go visit her grandmother. First of all, they were basically telling her never to see her grandmother again, and they already took the choice away from her to see her grandfather. And they were also trying to exclude her from an event that her entirely family was going to be present at, present at, which just also feels wrong. And I hate—I also hate this thing that is not just just Chinese culture, but it's certainly common. Uh, it's certainly common is that this idea that you're supposed to keep all your emotions like bottled up push your emotions down for the sake of others oh, that, that really gets to me because my own history with my parents and just society like so the thing is my mom has had high blood pressure ever since i was born and my dad basically told me when i was a very young kid that 
getting her riled up was bad for her, so I should never get mad, never misbehave, and never argue with her, because regardless of if I was right or wrong, like, if I was... Regardless of if I was right or wrong when arguing with her, I was wrong because I got her angry and triggered some of her symptoms. And I get what he was trying to say, but, like, what a thing to tell a kid, like, suppress your emotions. Like, how damaging is that for, like, there are so many adults who have to deal with that issue in therapy because keeping your emotions bottled up is not healthy in any way. And here he is, like, telling, actively telling me to do it. Uh, meanwhile, he was just like yelling at me and my mom all the freaking time, every single day, at least as far as I can remember. But yeah, I was a tiny kid. Uh, I didn't know any better, so instead of getting angry, I bottled it all up. And honestly, I was really good at it. It's not something to brag about, but I was really good at it because not once in my life have I ever exploded out of anger and like keeping everything in. Uh, instead, I'd spend so many nights just unable to sleep in bed, feeling like I was being torn apart from the inside. Uh, and then I cry because that pain was overwhelming, and I, I'm just so frustrated with this idea that you got to keep your emotions inside. It's not healthy, and I mean, what if it's the case that somebody else gets so stressed out that they themselves get sick from keeping this secret from Nai Nai? Um, but yeah, the, the anger thing only really applied to myself. I got angry on other people's behalf, but never on my own. So if I saw people being bullied, discriminated against, treated unfairly, I could get angry, but um, never with myself. So I wound up treating people better than I treated myself. I didn't know how to advocate for myself. And uh, yeah, you can't really successfully blunt one of your emotions without blunting others. So those of you who have watched my other reactions and discussions might have heard it in another video. But uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of shows and movies that try to show that emotions are your strength and that you are free to feel what you feel. Like, even if it's mo emotions that are typically coded as weak, um, there's a strength to letting yourself feel the way you feel, regardless of what society and what everybody, anybody else tells you. Because, like, being free to feel how you feel and not be shamed for it, like, it's good for your mental health. And it's good for, like, there's a self-advocacy that takes a lot of strength to do sometimes. Um, and I respect anybody who can do that. Anyway... Uh, that's a whole huge issue, but yeah, I went to therapy for it for a little less than two years, and all my baggage is gone now. Um, I mean, I still get angry at things that happen, but like I know how to deal with them healthily. Um, learned how to advocate for myself. Actually, my baggage got dealt with shortly after the first year was over, and I spent another at least a half a year building up skills to be as emotionally resilient as possible. Um, yeah, everybody should go to therapy, is my opinion. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, with all that backstory, that's that might help you understand why it bothered me so much seeing the situation where Billy was told to keep all her emotions to herself. I'm just like, so much pain and trauma is being born here, it just felt so ridiculous. Um, and yeah, Billy actually wound up holding it together better than some other family, people in her family did. Um, and I really I, I enjoy that once we get back to China... Like, everybody's really worried about Billy going to spill the be s spill the secret. Um, but everybody, we, sh we see that people one after another are really struggling with it. And you actually can't tell who is going to be the next one to break down. Uh, it was the uncle, and then it was Hao Hao. Um, that was a really interesting, way to, interesting thing to see unfold. Uh, but speaking of the uncle, that part when he's walking with Billy to the hotel and he keeps telling her things that she already knows, and she's like... What's it all? What's it all? <laughs> that felt so real too. And I know the intent, I know the intent of the uncle is not to be condescending, but like constant being constantly being lectured about the same things that you already know can drive you a little insane. And I get that in my parents' case and in Billy's uncle's case, they're not they're not saying it to help the younger generation. They're saying these things for themselves. Like my dad has specifically said that he feels better when he says something and um, that he doesn't nag me for my sake. He just needs to say things or he'll feel guilty if something does happen. Uh, for example, I've been cooking since I was nine, and every time I do and he's home, he has to tell me that the pot is hot. Like, no... Are you freaking kidding me? Like, I know. I've been cooking since I was nine. It's been almost 20 years. Um, Yeah, so his point is that he would feel guilty if I burned myself and he didn't tell me beforehand that it's hot, except... 
I would gladly get burned if it meant that I didn't have to deal with the annoyance and frustration of him having to hear the same things hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times. Like, as, a, as well as adjusted as I am after therapy, that still drives me up the frickin' wall. But he doesn't care if I get annoyed. He doesn't care if it's frustrating for me because at least it lets him have clear conscience, which is super, super selfish. But this is just... Ugh. I don't know if it's all Chinese people, but it's a thing in Chinese culture at the very least. Uh, and it's at least very prevalent. Um, in Chinese immigrant culture and Chinese culture in the mainland, I'm assuming, uh, I can't imagine anybody who grew up with their parents like that uh, who live in the United States haven't been driven so crazy that they've like sworn not to do that to their children. Uh, especially seeing... Growing up in the United States, I feel like probably made it that much worse um, because I see the way other parents act and I'm just like you try not to compare but you're like my parents are driving me crazy and all these other parents are just doing talking normally not hounding their kids not lecturing them not doing selfish things like this Ugh. anyway uh, Billy's whole thing with the fellowship hiding it from her parents that she didn't get it I'm sure a lot of people from other cultures might think of less of Billy for lying to her parents, but I don't because I understand just how on her case they undoubtedly were about everything and how much they judged her and how much, oh, the judgment is the worst part. Uh, and the, dis the disappointment they show, like she couldn't deal with another lecture, not emotionally prepared to have another, to be another disappointment um, and deal with their judgment again. And it's telling that she wound up telling her grandmother at the end, uh, and not them. Like, the grandmother seems so lovely and different than traditional Chinese stereotypes. Like, first of all, at the beginning of the film, she says, I love you. Like, what the heck? I don't know any Chinese person who has ever heard I love you from their family. Ah, if their family were immigrants, at the very least. Um, yeah, it just blows my mind. It blew my mind. Um, the whole lobster versus crab thing, <laughs> that was a lot of... That was really... It was, it was funny, but also, yeah, it, was, it felt very real. Nai and I had some, like, righteous indignation about it. I feel like I've heard stories about that, like, bait-and-switch thing, though. Um, I've never really experienced it for myself, though. Um, How How's fiancé is actually really cute, partially because of the situation she's put in. Like, she, I, I mentioned she looks like a deer in headlights almost the entire film. Um, and that was really funny. And... We actually never find out her take on having this wedding as an excuse for everyone saying goodbye to the her husband's uh, grandmother, which I'm actually I would be very curious to find out her thoughts. And uh, we also heard a story about the eggs and how Billy's parents saved theirs to give to her, and then her nanny <laughs> stole them. Um, but yeah, it's how Chinese people show love, right? With food, they make sure that their kid has enough no matter what, even if it means they don't have enough. And I would actually, it's actually kind of sweet, and I would actually really appreciate it if it wasn't for the fact that it's practically the only way they show affection. Like, give some emotional support, maybe. Like, the only way you know how to show affection is with food. That's kind of not enough, honestly. But, um... That discussion of Billy and Xiaobao later, where the mother is bad-mouthing uh, bad ma bad Billy right in front of her. Like, oh, Billy doesn't care about making money. She's only interested in doing what she wants to do. Like, she's painting Billy as such a selfish person when that's not the case at all. Like, we see Billy as a character. She's not selfish. And then they talk about how children are basically stocks. And the auntie says that Billy will make the family a lot of money. And Billy's mom is like, oh, we can't expect that out of her. She's a losing stock. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Like, the complete willingness to trash her kids in front of the rest of the family, and sometimes to strangers, like, what does that do for a kid's self-worth? I get that Billy is 30-something, but this has been happening undoubtedly for her entire life. Uh, I'm glad Lulu Wang uh, proved her parents wrong. Um... At least her mother wrong. We didn't see her father disparage her all that much. And then growing up in the United States, again, like what I said before, seeing other families be supportive of their kids while yours put you down, it's hard not to internalize that as a child and say like, oh, something must be wrong with me. And yeah, this is this commentary has basically turned me turned into me complaining about Chinese culture and Chinese, um, the way they raise their children. But 
anyway, <laughs> uh, the story that the mom tells about the church and how they gave them a key so Billy could play piano whenever, and that is America. Thankfully, like, my parents aren't like that, but I know some Chinese people who are like, oh, you can't say th bad things about the United States. We live here. It gave us an opportunity. And, like, if the young people try to show them that there are actual problems in the United States, they say what Billy's mom says is, oh, if you love China so much, why don't you move there? They have this kind of, like, blind nationalism for country. Um... Similar, like, to the uncle was just, like, saying that, oh, I, even, the, like, he, he had moved to Japan, I'm guessing, with his son, uh, and, um, that's where the son met the fiancé, but, yeah, he was just like, no matter what, I am Chinese, like, okay, like, why is that something that you need to be, like, so intensely passionate about, like, and, yeah, they have, like I was saying, um, I know some people in the United States who are like that. They have this blind nationalism. They think because they grew up in the United States or they because they immigrated to the United States and it gave them this opportunity to build a better future that the United States is just then beyond reproach. And a lot of these people are the kind of people, um, the kind of Chinese people that wound up voting for Trump. Um, the same people who came here as undocumented immigrants and then are now citizens now want to keep everybody else out uh they fear for other undocumented immigrants coming in they're like oh no once i got in nobody else is allowed in which is just completely lacking in compassion and stuff like that um i'm thankful my parents don't think like that at the very least but oh it is rough to know that a community that you're a part of a large part a large portion of them feel that way um i don't know how large a proportion actually I think, I believe in the New York City at least, uh, I think 25%, it was a pretty high percentage of Asian people who actually voted for Trump um, in the city, in New York City. I don't know about the state. Anyway. Um, but yeah, even Nai Nai says you can't talk bad about China. You're Chinese. And I don't know where that idea comes from. Like, like you can't, you can badmouth your kid, right? They, the mom even badmouths Billy a lot, but your country? No way. Like, you can't badmouth your country no matter what. Which just, ugh. And um, that part at the wedding where Nai Nai tells Billy that she'll grow... No, not at the wedding. Uh, earlier on when they were still prepping for the wedding, Nai Nai tells Billy that she'll throw her an even bigger wedding when she's married. That part was really, really rough. Um, and the music in this film was great. Some of it actually reminds me of... Uh, Persona 5 when you're in the Velvet Room. Uh, I don't know if any of you get that reference, but uh, obviously the voice in this was like very soft um, and much softer than Persona 5, but it gave me the same kind of feeling. It was like a calm sadness, an unavoidable sadness. And then uh, there was that portion where Billy was playing the piano to let out her frustration. And uh, she said she didn't play anymore, but like that was impressive. Um, I played violin for seven years and uh, if you told me to play something now, I wouldn't be able to do it. I can't even read sheet music anymore, I don't think. Um, I'd maybe be able to hear something and copy it if it's slow enough, but uh, very poignant moment because everything, everybody knows what's going on with her in that moment playing that piano, except Nine Knifer, of course. Um, she's just so frustrated, so angry, and sad. Um, yeah, really, really powerful. And uh, that scene at the grandfather's grave so many conflicting ideas of what you're supposed to do. Like, do you peel the oranges? Do you not? Do you open the cookies? Do you not? Uh, Billy tried to drink the alcohol, and they're like, no, no, no. Uh, it's actually possible that the people who stayed in China knew everything, and it was just the people who moved to the U U.S. and to Japan who d weren't sure. Um, but, yeah, there are so many superstitions and rules to these things, so I can perfectly understand if none of them knew, like, the actual rules. Um, so, yeah, when my grandmother passed away... My mom and uncles actually hired someone whose role was specifically to just make sure we were doing the right things the right way at the right time. Um, it's kind of fascinating. And, oh, I, I just realized my cousin was actually getting married within a few weeks of my grandmother's death. And the family decided not to tell her because she was already stressed the heck out about her wedding. I can't believe I forgot that till just now. Like... Wow, um, I mean, it's there's a huge difference between that and what's happening in this film, but 
she did actually wind up finding out before her wedding though uh i'm very curious as to who told her and who decided to um but yeah there are some similarities between those situations as well um so it's huh very interesting um and it, it is what the uncle's thought thought process uh was that he was that there's this guilt from keeping something from them uh but we as their family carry that burden of that information for them which I, th I I think we did the right thing. I, I did think the right thing to do was to tell my cousin about my grandma. Um, but I, I, I wasn't going to be the one to do it because I only I only saw... Since I grew up, she grew up on the other side of the, of the country in San Francisco. And I only saw her like once a year at most. I sometimes see her tw once every two years or something like that. So I was like, somebody should tell her. But I can't be the one to do that, I felt. Um, but yeah... If I was in Billy's situation, I would be very driven to tell Nai Nai the truth. Um, but upon learning when watching this film that she did it herself for her husband, like she pretended she didn't tell her husband that he was sick, that might have changed my mind because, yeah, like, I would like to believe that Nai Nai isn't a hypocrite and that if she did it for him that she would want it done for herself as well. So that probably would have changed my mind. Um, but yeah, we finally get to the wedding, and the uncle breaking down, that was rough. Um, I feel like that should have tipped off everybody as to what was happening. Uh, but he gets through it, and Billy even gets a short speech, which was nice um, <laughs> and cute. And uh, they all play this drinking game that I've never even heard of. Yi niao fei, yi niao fei, yi niao fei wen, jiu niao fei, something like that. Basically, the first bird flies, first bird flies first bird finishes flying and the ninth bird flies um and how how was the ninth bird and they just kept passing it along until somebody messes up and they drink um but yeah i kept going to how how i love that the fiance had no idea what to say but she was just like how how again so and he was so drunk he was like, all right i'm gonna drink <laughs> oh so good uh, and everybody was ganging up on him and he got so drunk at first like I, is he gonna be able to like perform later um, but that wasn't even an issue that we got to. He was just, the drinking lowered his inhibition so much and it let him actually feel sad and cry about his grandmother passing, which, like, we as an audience don't really sense his sadness before that moment. Like, earlier, he was a little awkward, but it hid all this pain beneath it as well. And to seeing to see him uh, break down like that was something else. Um, and Billy spent some time with him, stroking his hair even, um... I mean, it goes to show just how hard some people were taking it without letting it show. And again, he was probably, he was definitely keeping it bottled up as well. Everybody was in this movie, pr pretty much. Um, and then after they take this group photo, Nai Nai says something about s uh, sending someone for test results. And Billy runs the heck out of there after that photo. I mean... Some part of it is probably wanting to see the results for herself, even though she knows it's too late. Uh, but the bigger part is that now she's complicit in this lie, and part of her probably understands what her what the family is doing with this lie now, and so she's actually trying to go and help cover up the truth. Like, it's a big shift in who she is as a person. And um, after that, she's the grandma's like, oh, there's... See, I told you guys, there was nothing wrong. And then there's a shot where Billy is walking with the entire family towards the camera. And it just feels like it's an entire group now that they're all together. Like, symbolic of her being complicit with them. Uh, that they're doing this together as a family. I thought that was masterful. Um, the director is... Lulu Wang is amazing. And, uh, yeah, eventually, Nina gives Billy a red envelope. And throughout the film, we see Billy being very fond of her grandmother. But she never actually feels that close she never feels as close um to her parents as she is with her grandmother and is this a common thing in chinese culture like my grandparents were really really hard on my mom but were actually like really really nice to me like not just like giving me money for lunar new years but like uh or birthdays but like oh you've grown so big and strong like oh you got into hunter college high school that's amazing you're so smart or like, even with the YouTube channel, they're like, oh, wow, you're making money online at home? Like, how do you do that? Can you teach me how to do that? Like, jokingly, but uh, they're retired, obviously. But, um, yeah, in the very next moment, my mom will, like, try to tear me down in front of them. Like, saying that whatever I did was 
not a big deal or that I was wasting my time. I don't know. Is that a thing in China, Chinese culture where grandparents are just much nicer to the grandkids than the parents are? I know some exceptions because I know somebody, I have a friend whose grandparents are kind of shit to them too. I don't know. Um, but maybe it's com it's more common that the grandparents are like that. And yeah, I don't know nearly enough about how Nai Nai thinks, um, but is it possible that Chinese grandparents just have grown to realize what's important after, like they push their own children to be what they what they themselves wanted their children to be, um, but then in old age realize that the thing that matters most is that you're happy? Maybe that's the case, right? Like my parents have specifically told me that when they dec make decisions on my behalf, they don't take my happiness into, my, into account. So like, that is a hell of a thing to tell your kids, first of all. But then if I have kids someday, are they suddenly going to worry about their happiness? Maybe it's that it's not their responsibility to make sure their grandchild is doing the right thing. Like it would be my responsibility. So maybe that frees them up to be that nice, happy, loving grandparents. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what Nai Nai said about uh said to billy about the red envelope money like don't spend that money on practical things like rent the translation was actually like buy something uh buy yourself something nice but the actual translation was buy something you like like prioritizing the kids happiness which is just yeah that, that seems like such a no-brainer um but then there was that advice she gave billy like it's not what you do in life but how you do it and billy telling her uh, about the fellowship and how she didn't get it and then saying she didn't want her to worry um, And Nai Nai isn't worried like what the heck is that? She's like, I'm not worried about you I know you'll like you'll be fine Like I've never experienced that like someone in your family showing faith in your tenacity or your ability I like, cannot imagine it um, But yeah, Nai Nai coming down the stairs to see her family as far as she can My grandfather can barely walk but when my mother and I visit him without my dad driving he still walks he still offers to walk us to the bus, bus stop. Uh, one time he even wanted to take us all the way home, which is like impossible for him. He doesn't even know the way there. He doesn't know the way back. He can't climb stairs, which there are a lot of, uh, to the subway and back. And yeah, that was that felt really real. Um, and then we have Nai Nai waving goodbye to the taxi. Just, oh, that was, that was really touching to watch. Um, and then we have Billy back on the streets of New York giving that primal shout. Just wow. That was, wow. Like, it cuts to China again before her second shout. And it, like, sends the birds flying. I mean, I took it to mean that she's, like, sending the energy to her grandmother. And I'm sure there are, like, a ton of different ways to read into that moment. But, yeah, I thought it was really powerful. Uh, but as you can tell by my commentary, it's extremely long. It's been over 30 minutes. This movie kind of affected me a lot. Um, for the life of me, I couldn't really figure out a proper score to give it for a very long time. But I think I finally settled on a 9.5 just for how much it impacted me and the brilliance of the music and how the story was told. Um, very, very impressed. Um, but yeah. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed uh, the reaction and this very, very long commentary. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you want to see the full reaction, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, friends.